Well, I was watching this Eppelist channel uh, to see what it's it's all about. You know, I'm pretty close to done with the antinatalist uh, thing. They've settled in on some arguments. I, I know why they're absurd. But, um, yeah, a couple of things were coming to mind. I mean, first of all, the Eppelist was talking about you know, if you enjoy Mozart, the only value of that is in your head. There's no real absolute value. It's just in your head, so it, you can discount it. But what I'm saying is if a rock falls on your foot, the misery and pain of that is also just in your head. It's the same reasons. It's just in your head for the very same reason. The asymmetry is that it's easier to ignore joy and discount that and say, oh, it's worthless. You know, it's easier if you always go to really good restaurants to go to just a good restaurant and think that it was shitty than it is to, um, you know, break your foot and not find it very painful. You, that's the asymmetry, is that it's harder to ignore. Um, I think that's a natural asymmetry because since the joys are... Uh, a benefit to you and you're supposed to work to produce to produce them um, it's sort of up to you not to not to ignore them just because you can um, and equally you know you can lessen pains by using some of the same distancing techniques and oh it doesn't really matter doesn't mean it's not metaphysical you know some of the same techniques and it's it's good to try to do that and to try to get a balance so you can ignore more pain than normal and you enjoy more joy than normal so that they can be in parity and that's the balance that's one way of putting the balance okay the other thing is that just this issue they think that they're so logical um, they have found you know this absolute logic that we can all see um, but they base it on this idea of non-existent being. Well, you know, there's this little thing about logic that everybody that studies logic finds out, which is if you assume as one of your principles a contradiction, A and not A, like a non-existent existing thing, or a non-being being, or a non-existent being, then you can prove anything. You can prove anything with that. That's when you, you know, that's sometimes when you found you could prove anything you might go and look for the contradiction you missed. Non-existent being, excuse me. Okay. The other thing is the group dynamic. Okay, the group dynamic. Uh, it's, it's almost kind to call them a cult as if, you know, when we see how they go bad, it'll be because they're acting like a cult. No, it's, you know, it's, it's not going to be. It's dysfunctional and short-lived, really, uh, in that sense. Because, you see, since... Antinatalism has a choice, either it becomes violent and becomes something different, or most of them don't seem to have that in them really, uh, then it's just ineffectual, because you're never going to get 100% agreement. We can't even get 100% agreement that the earth is round, it's just statistics, you know, whether they're crazy or disorders or why that would be, the, you know, it's a statistics, one where there will be some reason for scattering like that. Since it's ineffectual, it allows a group to coalesce on feelings, group feelings. Um, and because it there's, doesn't mean anything, they don't have to do anything, quite the opposite. It means the proper thing to do is this in, impossible thing, so I don't have to do anything. You know, and, that, and that's how it structures. And uh, it, it makes, it just reinforces insular group kinds of things. You know, they're getting all our rate with us, and it doesn't even make sense. They say, it's logically undeniable. Anybody that thinks about it will realize it. They think someone like me hasn't even thought about it. Like this isn't evidence that I've thought about it. So that means that eventually, if people keep thinking about it, then they'll see the truth. So the only realistic goal would be to keep people talking about it. And they're not doing that. They block, they more and more want to just talk with themselves about it and um, they don't value what other people are input. They don't value the other people's role even in keeping people talking about it. Um, so, yeah. You now if I talk any more about antinatalism, I'll probably be repeating myself even more than I have in the past because 
uh, frankly, I figured it out. And the reason it was so interesting is it's one of these basic questions about life and to be or not to be and these questions. And, um, you know, I think we basically wrapped it up. The issue is essentially best understood socially as a pro-choice issue. Uh, people that are pro-life and say you should have the baby. And there's these other people that are pro not that kind of life and say don't have the baby. And both of them want to intervene in what is an individual matter, you know, a matter of individual sovereignty, uh, just like your own right to get heart surgery or anything else. So I think that is that, as they say.